Good day. I'm Mike Hendrickson, the VP of Skillsoft's Tech and Dev Products. Today I'm here with Marav Yurlifkar, the founder of Data Society. Can you talk a little bit about who you are and how you came about with Data Society? Mike, thank you so much for the introduction. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, so as you said, I uh, am the CEO and co-founder of Data Society, and we are a company that delivers customized um, data science training programs to professional audiences. And we also have our solutions services side of it where we provide some additional support in terms of um, building custom software, um, building uh, specific algorithms, um, helping develop kind of data architecture and everything that really revolves around data to help an organization become more data driven and data literate. And, uh, you know, we started in back in 2014, which seems like eons ago now, um, with a vision and a mission to uh, help people leverage the data that they have to make better decisions. You know, what we noticed is that data was already so ubiquitous six years ago and has only continued forward in that trend. And a lot of people were overwhelmed with data and didn't really understand how to use it. So they might've had a lot of Excel spreadsheets uh, on their computer and were maybe drowning um, in, in incoming data via, via other sources. And people don't have time to go back and get a master's. You know, they don't have um, the time to scroll through, um, you know, a bunch of YouTube videos. So, you know, what we did is we cultivated the best of breed practices for professionals who are busy, who need to learn the specific skills and get back to work. So similar to Skillsoft's vision, you know, of really shifting the way that an industry runs, um, we're very much aligned in that mission. And the way that we approach it is um, more of an in-person and live streaming uh, session for that instructor support. So that's why I'm really excited about, you know, this partnership that we're launching. Yeah, so we are too at Skillsoft, you know, working with Data Society on a series of boot camps around data. The first one being this one we're talking about now, Data Wrangling with Python, coming up on July 20th through the 23rd. We're expecting a general audience of people who are interested in data science and also those who are specifically in interested in the data wrangling part of it. And since most orgs are swimming in data, this boot camp will help them get their data under control. Can you tell us a little bit why a boot camp is a great way to jumpstart wrangling in Python? Absolutely. And the key word that you mentioned there was jumpstart. And that's exactly our vision because we know that professionals are really busy, probably more so now than ever as we're adjusting to this new way of life, working virtually. And what we found is the easiest way for people to start implementing these types of data skills is to have almost a crash course where they are able to dedicate the time that they need, whether it's over the course of a week or there's some of the course longer programs um, and immerse themselves in a classroom where they have a live instructor who's working with them through the content, where they have the ability to ask questions and they have the ability to sit there and practice the skills that they're learning. And so by dedicating the time to do that, um, not only are you going to pick up the skills faster because you have somebody that can answer questions on the fly and help adjust um, what you're looking for, um, but you'll also be able to start applying those skills directly back into your own projects and your own data at home. And by doing that, that's how people learn the fastest, right, is being able to apply that to their own work. And then obviously bringing an instructor in like uh, Dr. Martin Scherzinski, mm -hmm. the instructor you have selected for this event. Can you give us a little bit of context around his data background and his instructor background? Yeah, I mean, Martin, Dr. Martin is one of our favorite instructors. Um, we have a lot of star instructors on staff and, uh, what we love about him is it's simply the depth of knowledge that he has on the practical applications of um, wrangling data and analyzing data. And his background is in biostatistics and bioinformatics. Um, and so part of the work that he does every day is actually as a cancer prevention fellow. So working on cutting edge research using Python um, in order to analyze the data that he's receiving. 
In addition to that, he's actually authored some packages in Python. So for those of you who, who know Python, um, packages are kind of pieces of code that are freely available to anyone who wants to download them. And he's actually helped develop some of the vernacular um, within the Python programming language. So he's not only an expert in Python and in data science and analytics, he's also an expert instructor. He's been, you know, teaching for, uh, I think, better part of a decade um, in this exact same uh, area. And what's really great about him is he takes the time to make sure that you're understanding um, the little pieces of code that can make a, a huge difference, right? So what are the tips and tricks that you need to know in order to apply this practically back into your work? Um, so we're really excited for him to be spearheading this class. Yeah, are you, uh, you and Martin, Data Society and Martin, are you, do you have a certain structure you've built around the boot camp to where, is it practice, learn, learn, practice? Uh, is there a structure that you guys have developed? Yep, absolutely. And it harkens back to my days as an educator. So my past life, I was a teacher. Um, and one of our core tenets of data society is ensuring that all of the trainings that we produce and all the content that we produce is instructionally sound and very engaging um, for all of the students. So they really walk away feeling good about what they've learned. And the way that we do that is with a lot of hands on practice. Uh, as somebody who might have a background in coding will know, or anybody who's learned a language or something like that, the most important piece of the puzzle is practice. Um, you know, you're not going to come out of a 10 hour boot camp um, being a super expert in Python, but what you will have is the uh, confidence and skills to be able to continue to learn. And the way that we structured the class is introducing a concept and a skill seeing it applied in action by the instructor, and then actually providing students the time in class to practice on their own with a different um, use case. So you're learning about the skill, you're seeing how it's implemented, and then you have an opportunity to implement it in a different setting. And then in addition to that, if you have your own data and you wanna practice outside of class and bring your questions in the, you know, the following day, you're absolutely uh, welcome to do that as well. So students are encouraged to bring some of their own data or their own uh, assets to the to the course, to the bootcamp. Yeah, we find that's when when students have the most fun slash get the most frustrated, uh, because when data wrangling is one of those topics that um, feels very tedious when you first get started, but it's actually one of the most important steps for any data science project or any analytics um, project that you're working on. I know myself. I like to prepare for things. Is there anything a student should do? to really prepare for this boot camp that they might want to brush up on or anything like that? Uh, yes. So what I would recommend is going on to Skillsoft's Precipio platform and going through the introduction to Python uh, programming pathway. So um, the boot camp that we're offering as a first, um, you know, as, as our launch, it does require some background in Python. So any student who's attending should be familiar with basic functions in Python, should understand how to load data into Python, um, and should have some understanding of conditionals like for loops and while loops. So it's not for somebody who's a complete novice, and we definitely want to make sure everybody coming into the classroom is aware of that level of knowledge. Um, and again, you know, that's why we love partnering with you is because you have so much of that content that's already back pocket that students can go in, um, they can look at the lessons, they can bone up on their skills, and then come and have the opportunity to practice it in, in a live setting. And say, say if I have the skills and I'm there and I'm enjoying it, are there some best practices that I'm going to take away from this um, that I can start to use in my day-to-day -day job? One of the biggest takeaways to, that, that builds a solid foundation for anybody who's interested in pursuing data analytics or Python programming is the idea of the framework. Um, it's not, you know, using data analytics is not something where you can say, hey, clean this data and you know exactly what to do. There are a lot of different questions and variables that you need to be thinking about in terms of what your end goal is. So students that attend this course will be able to walk out not only with the skills to actually clean data um, and then automate that process, but they'll also understand the wider application of what framework do I need in order to make sure that I'm doing this correctly. So for example, if you know you need to create a visualization with certain metrics, how do I clean the data to make sure that those are the metrics that I'm focusing on? Um, so those types of questions uh, are ones that students will be able to answer after this bootcamp. 
And let's let's touch a little bit on data wrangler itself, because I think you know it's a term that uh, has become very popular in the last few years. Um, so what is it that a, a wrangler would do on a day-to-day -day basis in a, in a typical day at work? Uh, a lot of data wranglers focus on preparing the data for further analysis. So, you know, you don't need to be a PhD in statistics to be a data wrangler. What you do need to do is have an understanding of some machine learning techniques so you know how the data should be formatted. Um, and you should have a good understanding of the data that you're working with. Um, so day to day on a data wrangler, they might be collecting data in a timely manner. Um, they might be cleaning the data, might be sending out some reports um, to managers or to colleagues. And that's the stepping stone, I would say, between somebody that's just getting into data and then somebody to move on to a data analyst or a data scientist position. Um, right now, what we've seen is a lot of data scientists spend about 70 to 80 percent of their time cleaning and wrangling data. Um, and when you think about it, that's, that's a lot of time, right? That's very um, time consuming. And so by other colleagues being able to come in and support them and help them with those efforts, um, not only are they empowering themselves to dig into the data, but it's also allowing data scientists that might have that more advanced background to focus on building more complex algorithms and finding those um, hidden relationships and hidden patterns that, that machine learning is so good at. So that's really the data wrangling step uh, in terms of on your pathway to becoming a data scientist. Yeah, and it's becoming a more recognized industry standard term. Um, Burning Glass a couple of years ago identified it as the fastest growing um, in, in job postings online. So do you see it as a market, um, a valuable market thing to have in your, like your history, your career? Is that something that you can take with you to pretty much any job, anywhere you go? Definitely. Um, what we've seen since we've started is just an explosion in terms of job skills and job needs that involve Python and data cleaning. So not only is having Python programming on your resume uh, a way to a higher paying job, for example, or a pathway to becoming a data scientist, um, but it's also just in high demand because so many companies are now realizing exactly how much data they have and how much um, man and woman power they need to get that up and running. And um, a lot of people tend to undervalue you know, cleaning and collecting data. But like I said before, it's 70 to 80% of a data science project and data scientist time. And um, it really is the foundation for any organization to become data driven is to make sure that they have good data that's cleaned appropriately. Reliable, yes. So now let's tie in Python because obviously Python seems like a natural with data. Why is that? Why is Python such a nice combination with data science? Python is one of the most popular programming languages in data science um, for a few different reasons. You know, the first one is that it's an open source language. And what that means is it's free for anybody to use and download. And they have a huge community of individuals that continue to contribute um, to make the language more robust and more agile. So when you download Python and you start programming the language, you're joining this community of literally, you know, tens of millions of people who are active Python users every day and who are contributing to that. Um, and so you'll see the evolution of Python has grown tremendously in terms of what it's been able to do. And just to give you an example, um, you know, Python visualizations back in the day used to be a little bit um, more basic and now you're able to build dashboards in Python and you're able to build interactive plots in Python um, and that is only continuing to accelerate. Uh, you know another reason why Python is so great for data is the ability for it to ingest data large amounts of data quickly. Um, you and I both know Excel mm -hmm. has the, a limit in terms of the rows. Uh, with Python there is no such limit. It can process and ingest data very quickly, and especially as we're talking about large amounts of data, that's become increasingly important 
um, and you're able to also control the memory usage of it as well. So you can even run it on your computer, but maybe hooked up to a virtual machine or a virtual instance um, so that you don't have to rely on your laptop power uh, in order to process data. So you're looking at a language that's free, that's continually being updated, that's able to process data quickly, um, and you know you can run it on your on your laptop. So there is no reason why it wouldn't continue to grow in that in that vein. Um, you know, another thing that I love about Python, especially when I used to be working in Excel and then I moved to Python and R, um, is the ability to spot errors. Uh, one of the things I hated doing in Excel was looking for duplicates and finding um, errors in, in actual Excel cells, right? So is this number correct or is it not? With Python, it's much, much easier to do that, to program a script and to run it and to search for those anomalies. Um, and so that's become increasingly important for data wrangling and, and data science. And some of the manip data manipulations you can do with Python are pretty phenomenal compared to when you hit the limit with Excel or even a database on your laptop. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about the power behind Python and why it's so well suited for data wrangling? You know, when you're working with a data set that's millions and millions and millions of records, um, Excel just does not work. That's right. And so with Python, you have the ability to just in a few lines of code sort through those millions of rows of data in a way that you can't really do with Excel. Um, you know, some people might be using SQL, which is um, a querying language uh, for a database. That's also a good tool to use, but it's not as versatile um, or flexible as Python. And so the nice thing about having Python in your toolkit is you can actually connect Python and SQL and pull data from a database into Python, wrangle it all, you know, analyze it, clean it, and then take, put it back into that database. So it's just infinitely more flexible than what you would see with some of the other tools um, like Excel that many people use. Excellent. So Marav, any uh, last words on the bootcamp we have coming up on July 20th? You know, I'm really excited for the launch. We run these types of programs all the time with government agencies like the Department of um, Health and Human Services, the State Department, as well as a lot of uh, companies in the private sector. And so we have the experience uh, and have honed our process based on that. Um, and so to be able to bring that to a larger audience of Skillsoft students and users um, is really exciting because People who are coming into this boot camp um, are usually coming in to learn a very specific skill set for their jobs, and that's exactly what we're designed to do. Um, it's very practical, uh, it's very actionable. You'll be able to take all of the coding templates that we provide and actually start to use that for your own data. So that's a nice shortcut. Um, most I don't know any programmers that program from scratch, you know, <laughs> everybody always copies and pastes from different lines of code. And so this is a really great way to get that jump start that you need by having that reusable template already there. So I think there's just so many um, great benefits to joining the boot camp uh, and attending it live if you can, I think also brings an extra element of fun to it. Excellent. We look forward to that. We'll see you there. Wonderful. See you there.